In the first video of this series, we saw how to install and use Ansible to run some arbitrary commands on our servers. In the second video, we saw how to use a playbook to orchestrate a few tests and install Nginx, including adding a repository for Nginx, installing it, and using handlers to start Nginx after the installation process was complete. Next, we're going to take all of this a step further and start using some of Ansible's more advanced functionality, such as the use of files, templates, variables, and other data that we can use to create a really fully functioning website. So we're going to do this by orchestrating all of our Nginx needs into one coherent role. Ansible roles are just that. It's just a folder, a folder with a certain structure that lets us put in things like our templates and files and other metadata. So let's start doing that. Inside of this Ansible directory that we've been working in, I'm just going to create a directory called roles. And inside of roles, I'm going to create an Nginx directory. So let's get into that. And we're going to create the directory structure for our Nginx role. So this is not fully inclusive, but each role can have a files directory, a handlers directory, metadata directory, directory, templates, tasks, and variables in the vars directory. So this is the basic outline, the basic structure of a role. And we'll go through these directories and add some of the needed information. And at the end of it, we'll have a role that is good for installing Nginx. All right, so let's start with metadata. Inside of meta, or I should start by saying inside of any of these directories, we can create a file called main.yaml. And this is the file that's going to be loaded if other files aren't called explicitly. So we'll have a main.yaml file inside of the metadata directory, test directory, the variables directory, and the handlers directory. So let's start by setting the metadata. In here can actually go a lot of information, but the most basic we want to define are our dependencies. If we have no dependencies, we can just have an empty array here. So I'm not going to actually have any dependencies for this role, but if we did, we could set up a few. So for instance, we could say this role has a dependency on another role called SSL certificates or something like that. And you know, we can define other roles and other metadata about those roles as dependencies here. So how this will work is that if I try to run this role called Nginx, it'll see a dependency of the role is another one called SSL certificates and run that one first. However, I don't want to define any dependencies here. So I'm just going to do an empty array of dependencies and that'll be the full extent of our metadata file. All right, next we can use some files. Now files will not have a main.yaml file, like I said. This directory can be used just to have any arbitrary files that we might want to use to copy into our servers that we're provisioning. These don't use variables or anything like that. These aren't templates. So these files are just as is, they're there, and you can use them to copy to your servers. So what do I use this for? Well, with Nginx, I almost always use H5BP's Nginx server setup. So the H5BP server configs and Nginx repository contains a lot of great baseline configurations. Some of this I don't include. I'm actually only going to grab the H5BP directory specifically, and that just contains the basic configuration file and some other items. These are great specifically for setting cache headers, and if we use an SSL certificate, it has some stuff for a proper SSL setup to use TLS and good cipher protocols that enable a more secure connection. So I'm actually just going to grab this h5pp directory and I'm going to do that by copying the link to the zip. And on my Ansible file here, I'm going to go into files. I'm going to wget that zip file. And I think I'll need to actually install the unzip utility to unzip that. Nope, it's already there. Great. Um, sorry about that. Well, let's see. Inside of this directory, we have master. So I'll unzip master.zip. And let's see, let's remove that, let's get out of the way. So I want to get into the server configs, and I only want to save H5BP. So let's move that up a directory. H5BP, move that up. And I'm just going to remove the server configs directory. So we only have H5BP here left. 
And that's all I want. I just want that portion. All right, so we've created a metadata file. We've added some files that we're going to add to our server. What's next to find some variables? So I'm just going to define some variables that we might use in other parts of this role. So variables, just like meta, use a main.yaml file. I'm just going to keep this simple and set one variable. I'm just going to call this domain serversforhackers.com. And we'll use this inside of our virtual host and some other places. If you want to do other variables, you can just do you know any, any key value pair here as much as you want. All right, so we just use variables and we just use it in a very basic fashion. I just set the domain variable that we can use in other places. Next, I want to create a template. And the template I want to create is actually the configuration for my site. So what I'm going to do is create a template file and I'm going to call it serversforhackers.com. And this is just going to be the Nginx configuration file I use for my site, Servers for Hackers. And I'm going to end it in J2 because Ansible uses Jinja2. It's a Python template library. So let's start building an Nginx site configuration. And I'll just go through this real quick. I'm going to listen on port 80 here. And I'm going to set this as the default server. Server name, I'm going to use the domain variable that we use. So we have a template syntax of the double curly brace to use the variables we defined. And that was semicolon. And in fact, I'm going to do a special setup here, right? So I only, I don't want to actually use any subdomains on the site, including the www subdomain. So I'm going to say this server group will capture a server name of any subdomain of my serviceforhackers.com domain. And it's going to return a 301 redirect to the HTTP no domain version. Oops. In fact, I should use my domain variable again. All right, that's good for that part. Let's move on. Add a second server block here. This is going to listen on 80 again. And in fact, I don't want this to be a default server. All right. So I'm going to set my web root as var www, and actually I'm going to use the domain as part of the web root. Oops. Index to index.html, index.htm. And I'm just going to roll through this and copy and paste a few things in here that are just kind of boilerplate. Now check out this next line. I'm going to include the h5bp files here. So I'm including the basic configuration file, which itself includes some other ones. But we'll see when we get to the task how we include the h5bp directory into the correct place so this include directive works when the server gets set up. So I'm going to do some more boilerplate. Let's clean up here. All right, we want for the rest of the site here. Once again, this is just going to be for static files. So we'll try files. We'll try to see if it's a file. And then try as a directory. And then failing any of that, we're just going to send a 404 error. And that should be enough to get us started. All right, so we have a template now. And this template actually uses the variable domain we set in a few places. So it uses it for the web root. And actually, I messed the web root up. I want that to be a public directory and end in a semicolon. So we use it for the server name. The server name redirects to the non-www or any subdomain version of the site. And we use the domain for some logging. And then we just set up some boilerplate, including the h5bp configuration, which we're going to include right now. All right, so we've set up files, some metadata, some templates, of some variables. Uh, let's go do our handlers really quick. So handlers, once again, we'll do main. And we're just going to set um, two handlers here. And these are going to be, well, one of these is going to be very familiar. It's going to be just start nginx. So we use the service module. 
and we're going to tell it to use the nginx service and the state we want is started. Next, we're going to define the restart nginx, or I'm sorry, we're actually going to reload nginx. So this is going to reload nginx's configuration. And once again, we'll just use the service module. And the name is going to be nginx, and the state here is going to be reloaded instead of started. And that's it. That'll be enough for our handlers. All right, so we've set up actually everything but the tasks. And the tasks is where everything gets used and put together. So tasks, once again, main YAML. And we'll start with our three dashes. All right, so let's begin. I'm going to just paste in some stuff we've already seen. So this is just going to install the Nginx repository. And then we're going to install Nginx. And then I'm going to notify to start Nginx. And these are all we've actually seen so far in our previous examples, adding the repository and installing Nginx and then running the handler start Nginx. So let's start using some of the extra functionality we added. The first thing we're going to do is going to use the files module, and I'm going to copy in the h5bp configuration that we used. So I'm just going to call this add h5bp config. It's going to use the copy module because we're just copying files. The source is just h5bp. The destination is etsy nginx. The owner is going to be root, and the group is going to be root. Great, so that'll just copy the h5bp configuration. Now next, we want to start configuring Nginx. So before we saw we have this template, and this template is going to be the configuration for our website. So we're going to do two things here. The first thing we're going to do is disable the default configuration that Nginx comes with. So we're going to use the file module, and the file module can do a lot of things, one of which is delete files. So we want to delete the Etsy, Nginx, sites enabled, default. And we want its state to be absent, as in not present. So this file happens to be a symlink to the same file in the sites available directory. But in this case, we're just deleting it out of the sites enabled directory so that Nginx will just know that this default site configuration shouldn't be used. All right. And then after that, we're going to notify to reload Nginx. So this is going to reload Nginx. Nginx is going to see that there's no default configuration there. All right, next we're actually going to use the template we created to add the Nginx configuration for the service for hacker site and enable it. So that'll be in two steps. The first is add service for hackers site config. And this is going to use the template module. The template module needs to be used because it's a template and the template happens to have variables inside of it. So we want Ansible to use the Jinja2 template engine, parse the template, replace any variables with the value needed, and then put it where we want it to be. So the destination is the template that we created called serversforhackers.com.j2. The destination is going to be Etsy Nginx sites available, and we're going to call it the file by the same name, serversforhackers.com, leaving out the J2 because Nginx doesn't need to know about that. Now the owner we're going to set as root, and the group also as root. And then next, we are going to enable the configuration. So enable service for hackers site config. So before we put the service for hackers.com configuration in the site's available directory, it's not enabled yet. So to enable it, we need to symlink the service for hackers.com configuration file into the site's enabled directory. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're once again going to use the file module. The source is going to be Etsy Nginx sites available, servers for hackers.com. The destination will be the same except sites enabled and servers for hackers.com. And the state is going to be a link. All right, great. So that's actually most of our setup here. We want to install Nginx with the repository. We want to add the H5BP configuration. We'll disable the default configuration, and then we'll add and enable our site configuration. So one more thing I want to do is to show you that we can actually use variables inside of here as well. So I'm actually not going to specifically say serviceforhackers.com.conf. Instead, since we already know that's the domain and that's in a variable, we are just going to use the domain variable. 
All right, so what this is going to do is just set up a convention where we use the domain name as the file name of the site in the Service by Hackers Nginx configuration. You can set this up any way you want. I just happen to prefer this way. Either way, I'm still using the servicebyhackers.com Jinja2 template. I'm not going to use the variable there. I just want to show you that you can use variables in your task file as well. All right, so let's save this, and then we can try running it. First thing I want to do is edit the Nginx YAML file. And instead of all this stuff, I'm just going to blow it all away, in fact. So instead of have all the tasks listed in here, I'm instead just going to say what roles we want to run. So we'll do a list. We can do many roles. This, the only one we have to find right now is the Nginx one, so we'll just use that. So this is actually going to do some stuff for us automatically, which is great. It's going to see that there's a roles directory here. Inside the roles directory, it's going to see that it has an Nginx directory, so it knows that there's a role named Nginx. So we actually don't need to do any extra work to tell Ansible that this role exists here. So Ansible playbook, once again, we're going to do all hosts. Well, actually, I don't need to define all hosts. YAML configuration has already done that for us. This already has the hosts. We're going to use web, use sudo, user root. So Ansible playbook, we're going to say the private key, once again, is the SSH ID Ansible. And we're going to do the Nginx playbook, which defines the Nginx role inside of it. All right, so we have a syntax error. Home vagrant in tasks main. Great. OK, so this is actually a great error message. So we want to edit roles, Nginx, tasks, main. And we want to fix the semicolon here at repository. And actually, all I want to do here is remove some wait space. That's the syntax error here, because YAML has a pretty specific need for wait space to be right. And before we do again, we want to do Ansible playbook, and we're actually going to ask it to do a syntax check. And we want to do a syntax check on our Nginx playbook here. All right, so let's check out what this error means. Files is not a legal parameter in a task or handler. So vim, we want roles, Nginx. Let's check out the handler and main, the files there. Vim roles, Nginx. We want tasks then and main, files. And this is actually the file module instead of file, so I just had to get rid of that S. Let's save and quit that. Let's run another syntax check. All right, great, no errors this time. So let's run this. Once again, Ansible playbook, we set the private key and we tell it the playbook we want to run. All right, it's off. So we can see here, once again, it's gathering the facts for the playbook run against the web group. It's adding the Nginx repository, installing Nginx if it needs to. And then it's going to come across the stuff that's new in this role. So before, in previous videos, we've actually done some of the previous stuff here. Now we're adding the H5BP configuration. We're disabling the default configuration. We're trying to add the SFH site configuration, except we are running into an error. A duplicate parameter was found. All right, so let's check out this error. Add service of hacker site configuration. A duplicate parameter was found in the argument string destination. All right, so then we want to edit. All right, so let's edit this. Vim, we want to roles, nginx, tax, the main file, of course. And we are going to be looking for a problem in the add service or hacker site configuration where a duplicate parameter is found. So add server hacker site config, destination, destination. Ah, I need to change that to source. So that's source, then we have a correct destination, and the rest of that looks good. And we did not duplicate that error here. Okay. So Let's run this role again. And we know we can safely run this again. This is the beauty of Ansible. We can just keep messing this up and keep retrying until we get it right. You don't necessarily want to do this on a production server, but as long as we're in testing here, we can just keep rerunning it. The actions are impotent, so we are always going to end up with the same result every time we run this. All right, perfect. Let's see what happened here. So these top things have actually already happened a few times. Um, the H5BP fit config was already there from the successful run of it up here. Disabling the default configuration already happened. And we can see that here. And then we finally got to the stuff that changed, because this is where it errored out last time. Add the service for hacker site config, enable service for hacker site config. Those are the two that are changed in this run, and everything's OK. All right, so now we have a working role set up. This will do all of these tasks, and we can run it again and again to our heart's content, always knowing that we're going to have the same result again. The last thing I want to do real quick is verify that everything is installed and the server is okay. 
So I'm just going to pick one of the servers. This is just one from those three. And we're going to log in and just make sure everything's actually running. So let's check out Nginx. You can see Nginx is running. It's a few master processes as normal. Pseudo service Nginx status. It's running. Uh, we can do config test. And that's failed. So let's actually check that out. Let's see Nginx. Um, okay, so I actually see the error off the bat here. So in sites enabled, we have the service for hackers configuration. And one of the things I did was include the H5BP basic configuration. But there's no H5BP configuration file in here. In fact, there is instead the basic configuration directive only and location. So we need to fix that. Um, let's fix our roles, our Nginx is a task that has that, and we'll edit the main file. And the error I did here was in saying that the trailing slash should be used, or in fact it should not. So we're saying put this entire directory instead of the contents of the directory inside of this directory. So we're going to save that, and let's run this role again and see what we get as a result. All right, this is exactly what I'd want to see. The only thing that changed here is the add h5bp config because the directory locations have changed now. All right, let's see that. If I, it's a directory here now, and this time we will see the h5bp directory, and inside of that we'll correctly see the directive only and location files. All right, so now let's service nginx config test, fail, let's reload it. Still failing. All right, so let's check that out. Bar log nginx, um, tail the error log, actually sudo. Invalid number of arguments in root directive in nginx site enabled service rackers 11. So I'm gonna copy that directory path. Let's edit it. Um, it said the root is what it didn't like. Um, oh, okay. So I didn't put a semicolon at the end of the configuration file there. And let's see, are there any other lines without semicolons? I think the rest are okay. All right, so let's edit our template. This is gonna be templates, service for hackers. All right, so at the end of the root, we just need to add that semicolon. And we saw that everything else looked okay. So then we can run the playbook again and get that fix propagated to our servers. All right, cool. Now we made that change in one server, so it only needed to make that change in the extra two servers where we did not fix that error already. Sweet. All right, let's do our config test again. Fail, and we'll reload and see what that does. Pseudo service nginx. Reload, fail. All right, so let's once again pseudo tail error log. Ah, okay. This is a f issue of the H5BP configuration specifically. All right, so Vim, let's see files, oh, I'm sorry, roles, nginx, files, H5BP. Um, let me see which one this is. I think it's part of the directives for expiration. Yeah, okay, so H5BP likes to have this access log static for certain static files. I don't ever use that, I don't like it. So let's get rid of the location expires. Uh, I wanna get rid of the access log. I'll just comment it out. That's done, let's run our Ansible playbook again. All right, H5BP config changed. Everything else is good. Let's reload it. We see we get okay this time. And we can do a config test as well, also okay. Let's make sure these still run. Perfect. All right, so now we have a working role and we verified that everything is going okay in the servers. Once we fix all of those errors, we can run and rerun our Ansible roles via the playbook, and we can just keep going until everything is fixed and all the kinks are worked out. Once they are worked out, we can put this role into production use and start using it to configure all of our servers.